being described as a melting pot and being facilitated by globalization and war. The United States has seen an influx of immigrants over the past decades, who come with diverse cultural and linguistic backgrounds. As the immigrant students enter the U.S. education system, they will interact with students from different racial and ethnic backgrounds. This interaction will lead to what we call the assimilation. Defined as adapting to a certain culture and usually the dominant culture. But before we go deep into assimilation, let's first answer the question: What is the dominant culture in the United States? Being as a nation founded on settler colonialism and with slavery playing an important role in the history, the racial segmentation of the United States has been depicted in a binary term from over a century ago. With the white being viewed as a superior race at that time, and black being positioned as inferior, and thus the racialization of population, together with the core values in the society, is still polarized. This leaves the immigrants, who are neither white nor black, being left in between the two polars. It's a struggle with racial triangulation and relative valorization. Immigrants who may never truly belong to either end of the spectrum, while their value and identity are being constructed and signed by a dominant group relative to another minority group, so that the dominant group could obtain control over both subordinate groups. And so, it is important to understand that the modern assimilation theory is built upon this racial triangulation and relative valorization. And this is because immigrants who are forced to bear the label "the others" doesn't really belong to either of the binary group. Based on this information, the first assimilation theory is the conventional assimilation theory, or otherwise known as the straight line assimilation theory. It suggests that through generations and with the accumulation of human and economic capital, immigrants will eventually achieve upward mobility. They're expected to convey to the core American value, and in many past literatures, this value is associated with the white middle class. A more up-to-date theory is the segmented assimilation theory, in which it describes various paths of assimilation, but still impacted by the hidden racial ideology. Immigrants may assimilate upward to the middle white class or preserve their culture by staying in the ethnic enclave. Or assimilate downward to underclass. And so the question is, what does that have to do with schools? Have you heard of the saying that Asians are all good at math? Well, now let's think back to the relative valorization. One example is the model minority label that is being placed on Asian Americans. So that the failure and challenges faced by other minorities are contributed to their inaptitude, rather than a social and racial problem originates from the white supremacy. Then how about the language? The standard English and its underlying language ideology reflects the belief that upward mobility refers to the adoption to the white middle class's way of living. And so the mastery of standard English is seen as a key tool to open that door. Under the language ideology, multilingualism, which is a common feature among immigrant students and which is indeed an asset, are often viewed as a deficit that prevents them from acquiring the standard English. So let's remember that assimilation theories are indeed embedded in the racial ideology. And the language ideology. Thank you for watching.